Hey guys, let's talk some more about that Chia crypto coin and the technical side of it. And this time, let's talk a little bit about what goes into designing a plotting rig, what do you need to look at, what did I do, and what are the results. This is going to be a bit of a long video, but I'll put jump links in the video description so you can easily jump to each of the components individually. All right, let's take a look. Okay, so camera quality was a bit lacking on the last video about Chia. Much better this time. Oh, and about that last video, I just wanted to mention I've started building up a tips and tricks article for Chia farming. Again, more on the technical side. One of the first things in there is how to disable the Linux UAS USB storage driver. Whenever there was a high load on one of the drives for a prolonged period, it would cause issues you could see in the dmessage log of the systems. Blacklisting the UAS driver and forcing it to use the, I guess, older USB storage driver fixed all these issues for me. And as I said, it's been rock solid since then, and well, I haven't really noticed any performance differences. This also has the added benefit of being able to read out smart values, such as the temperatures, from all the USB connected drives. So check the video description for a link to that article. Anyway, specking out a plotting rig can be a complicated task if you aren't familiar with hardware and some of the more intricate specifications, or don't have the knowledge to identify bottlenecks in a configuration. Today, we'll take a look at most of this stuff, except for the SSDs or rather NVMe drives. I believe that warrants its own video, which I'll try to make shortly after this one. Oh, and this video also isn't going to be about a dedicated farming rig. You can either combine your farmer on your plotter or run it as a separate box like I'm doing. And they've said you can run it on a Raspberry Pi. And while normally that might've been true, I don't agree with that right now, mainly because the network is very busy or active. So running the full node on there might be a bit much right now. It still doesn't need much CPU power and you could run it on like the little, a little box like I have uh, with a uh, Gemini Lake CPU in there, or you could run it on the plotting rig, that's fine. Uh, your gaming rig, a VM on another server, that's all fine. It doesn't need much, but it needs a little bit right now. Right, back to that plotting rig then. I'm going to be naming a few of my choices or recommendations for a fast plotting rig without taking a set budget into account too much. I assume you don't want a 10 plots per day rig, but you want a 50 plots per day rig. The specific exact models of items I mentioned should be seen as examples, and I'll also tell you why I picked those specifically, so you can pick alternatives based on the same principles. We're almost getting started. Few last things, let me know down in the comments what you think of these components. I'll have all components listed in the video description, which will be affiliate links. Those do help me out if you decide to use them. And I have a 3900X and a 5900X system running mainly with the specifications I'll show you here. And as you can see in these screenshots, they do output the amount of plots I say they will. So it's not really a guessing game or theoretical specifications. These are real world examples. And well, here is basically the proof to back that up. Right, let's start with the case. Uh, for the case I actually bought, I went with a Be Quiet DX500. That's a well-ventilated case which comes with three pre-installed fans that aren't high airflow, but they do move a good amount of air to just cool a hot CPU inside. Remember, we're not going to be using a GPU. The case can be generally found for about 99 bucks, and with those fans included, I think it's a really good deal. But the case really matters least for a plotter that isn't going to have internal storage. I mean, we don't need to connect any drives. I'm just using USB 3 attached drives like you saw in my previous video. Uh, those are the cheapest to buy right now anyway. So it's mostly airflow that's important while not making too much noise. 
if you are in a home environment, having a screamingly loud PC running 24 seven sucks. So I take noise into account a little bit. So there's a lot more options out there if you're looking around, but make sure to include a few decent case fans to get fresh air into the box and hot air out of the box. Glass or solid panels all around might look pretty, but don't do too well for cooling. Okay, let's move on to the power supply. Personally, I'm a fan of Seasonic, but also think Be Quiet, EVGA, and Corsair all make decent PSUs. Over the years, I've used all of those, never ha really had an issue with them. Don't buy a budget power supply. Get something that's at least 80 plus gold. This thing is going to be on 24 seven, and while it won't use a giant amount of power, having it be at least decently efficient and thus not waste too much power, which then again makes heat, which then needs extra noise to get it away from the computer again, is a good thing. Generally, the components used in a 80 plus gold power supply will also be better than a cheapo power supply and should be suited to run 24 seven. Power wise, we don't really need that much, no hungry GPUs or something like that. So 500 watts or maybe 650 watts is a good amount to look at. Okay, let's move on to the motherboard, which will also reveal which platform I'd recommend getting. And that is basically any X570 motherboard. In one of my plotting boxes, I use an ASRock X570 Gaming 4, which is really a budget board, but it has been running fine. And in another box, I have an Asus X570 Prime Pro, which is a bit more premium, but also runs just fine. We aren't really going to use much of the extra functionality more expensive motherboards have, and the Ryzen 5900X I recommend, we'll learn that in a minute, <laughs> can be handled easily by even the most mediocre VRAM or power circuitry on these motherboards. But I do recommend getting an X570 board instead of a B550 for AMD. The biggest reason is that the X570 has two Gen 4 NVMe slots, where the B550 only has one. This is because the X570 chipset also gets Gen 4 lanes, where the B550 doesn't, and the second NVMe runs through the chipset. That also means the SATA and USB ports on the X570 also get more bandwidth. Right, CPU then, well, that's obvious, the Ryzen 9 5900X. I believe this is the ideal CPU to mine Chia. This CPU gives you 12 cores with 24 threads. This means you should be able to run 10 to 20 plots in parallel with a maximum of five to six hours completion time each, given there are no other bottlenecks, but we'll talk about that in the next video. Why not the 5950X? Well, it does give you four more cores, but there's a trade-off where your boost behavior will be lower since you have the same power envelope for both processors. Having 12 cores of the 5900X boosted to 4.3 GHz, in my opinion, does better for Chia than having 16 cores but at 4 GHz. The higher boost peaks will allow the plots to finish faster and basically, in the end, both CPUs will have about the same performance, but the 5900X costs less. So the 5950X isn't a bad CPU, it's just not much faster for what we're trying to do. I currently don't have enough experience with Intel plotting boxes to advise there. Well then, with a CPU selected, we also need to cool that CPU, and for that you'll want a decent cooler to try and keep that Ryzen 5900X a bit cool-headed so that it boosts nicely. I like the Scythe Mugen 5 PCC, PCGH edition or not as an example. Not too expensive, but a good chunk of metal which will try and keep your CPU cool. Alternatively, you could also go with at least a 240 millimeter all-in-one liquid cooler, which would also be a fine choice, but make sure it's compatible with your chosen case before you do so. Generally, air coolers between 40 and 80 bucks should give you good results in a well-ventilated case. There's that ventilated case thing again. Then the brain needs some RAM and a 32 gigabyte kit for speeds of 3600 megahertz should do nicely. Ryzen memory issues have generally been resolved over the last few years and anything for sale right now should work 
just fine. So get any 32 gigabyte kit that is 3600 megahertz. 32 gigabytes is enough to run up to 12 plots staggered without any issues, and it saves you from needing expensive kits of 64 gigabytes of memory. And if, when selecting a kit, the cast timings really don't matter if it's 14, 16, or 18. Uh, those are cool, especially for gaming, but generally aren't worth the extra, extra money for Chia mining. And well, we only need two more items, and then the basic components of the box are complete. First is, well, we need to be able to attach a screen, so a video card. Any old video card you might have lying around will do, but I like using these Zotac NVIDIA GT 710s, which have a PCI, time, uh, PCI Express x1 connector, so it's not going to take up a x4 or a x16 connector on the motherboard, which we will be using later. But again, uh, I don't remember. Next video. <laughs> And last, we need to be able to put an operating system on something. So get any cheap SSD. We really only need about 32 gigabytes of space since a Linux install doesn't really use that much. It doesn't need to be fireball fast speeds either. It just needs to boot and do its work. Use B sticks are less recommended since a generic Ubuntu install, for instance, isn't tweaked for running a used B stick and will write through its memory cells pretty quickly with logging and such things enabled. And well, that's it really. That's a basic plotting PC, which will give you about 40 to 50 plots per day if given the correct NVMe storage and plot offloading setup. But again, that is something for another video. Can't cram it all into a single one. The box we just spec together will cost you between $1,400 and $1,500, but again, that is without any storage. Um, well, yeah, let me know down in the comments if you have any questions about specific items or replacement parts since something isn't available right now or anything like that. As I mentioned, uh, I have all links in the description uh, for Amazon affiliate links if you're able to use those. Thank you very much. And yeah, I'd love to hear in the comments what you build. There is also a thread on chiaforum.com. I'll have linked in the description next to my own article, which is a very good uh, article where someone's building a plotting PC and I and a few others helped them out with components. So there's a good amount of tips in there. Other than that, Thank you for watching, and well, I hope to see you back in a future video, as said, that NVMe video should be coming shortly. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.